Hello all, myself Divya Lissia Joseph, I am an assistant professor in the computer science department in AKGAC. Now I am going to discuss some topics related to memory address calculation. So what is an array? An array is a collection of items of same data types stored in contiguous memory locations. And the point here to be noted is the location of the next index depends on the data type we use. Consider here, in the memory location, these are the memory addresses 200, 201, 202. These are the address of the memory location. And we have stored the characters U, B, F, etc. in contiguous memory location. So, we have an array which contain character data elements namely u, b, f, d, etc. And since the size of a element, the size of a character data type element is 1 byte in 16 bit compilers, it takes 1 byte. The character u takes 1 byte. So, its address location is 200. So, since it takes 1 byte of memory, the next address will be 201. Here B also takes one byte of memory, so the next address will be 202. Like that it goes on. One dimensional array. What is one dimensional array? We have one dimensional and two dimensional, three dimensional, n dimensional arrays. So what is one dimensional array? It is the simplest form of an array. Here elements are stored linearly, linearly. See the same example can be taken again. Like this is a one dimensional array. Here all the elements are stored linearly and the array index, array index starts from 0 here. Suppose in a linear array A, the size of the array A is 10 and the array index starts from 0. So up to which index? 0 to 9. By using the uh, index 0, we can access the first element. That is A of 0 will be the first element, A of 1 will be the second element, like that the last element index will be 9. So, A of 9 will be the last element. Memory address calculation of an element in one dimensional array. Suppose we have to calculate the memory address of this element. So, we know this is the base address. What is base address? It is the address location of the first element in the array. Base address is the address location of the first element in the array. And we have to calculate R of 3. So, initially we have to find how many elements are there before the array of 3. How many elements are present in the given array before the specified element? How can we find that? We can find it using the index. The, this is the this is its index that is 3. 3 minus the lower bound of index. Lower bound, this is 0 is the lower bound and 4 is the upper bound regarding this array. So, how can we find how many number of elements are there before the desired element? That is 3 minus 0. This is the index we are going to, index of the element uh, that we are going to find out the memory address and 0 is the Ba uh, base index. So, this will give you what, how many number of elements are there before the desired element and when you multiply that with the size of each element, when you multiply this, that is the number of elements that are proceed in the, before the uh, desired element, when you multiply with the size of each element, here what is the size? It is 4 because these are integer elements and the size of integer elements in a 16-bit uh, uh, compiler is 4 byte. So, 3 into 4, 12 bytes of memory. 12 bytes of memory are needed to store uh, first uh, store the elements from index 0 to index 2. Now, we have to add this value with the base address value that is the address of the uh, first element. So, what will be that? 112. See, this is the address of the 
uh, element with the index value 3. So, we can generalize what we have done in a formula like this address of a i. In the example, we have seen address of a 3. Here, address of a i is equal to b. What is b? b is the base address. What is base address? Base address is the address of the first element in the array. Base address plus w. What is w? w is the size of each element, size of the data element. In the case of int in a 16-bit compiler, it is 4 byte. If it is character byte, it is a character, it is 1 byte and so on. Then i minus lb, what is that? i is the index of the element whose address is to be calculated and lb, what is lb? That is the lower bound of the index. In the previous case here, the lower bound was 0 and i was 3. So, i minus lb. So, this is the equation for calculating the address value of a particular element which is present in a one dimensional array. Now, moving on, let us consider an example. Given the base address of an array A 1300 to 1900 as 1020, this is the base address. Then what is this 1300 and 1900? This is the lower bound of the array. So here, the, ad, uh, the indexing start from 1300 to 1900. This is the lower bound and this is the upper bound of the array. This is the lower bound, this is the upper bound. And the size of each element is 2 bytes in the memory. Find the address of A1700. Find the address of the element A1700. So, applying the formula, we initially we have to find how many elements are there from 1300 to 1700. How many elements are there from the index 1700 to 1300 to 1700? How can we find that? Find that using this i minus lb that is 1700 minus 1300 and when you multiply that with w that is the size of each element then you will get the total amount of memory that it has used to store 400 elements. So, it should be added with the base address then by proceeding the calculations we will get the answer as 1820. That is, this is the address location. This is the address location of the element A1700. Hope it is clear. Next, now just now we have discussed about the one dimensional array memory, uh, memory address calculation. Now, we are moving on to multi dimensional array. So, what are multi dimensional array? Uh, the simplest form of multi dimensional array is two dimensional array. Any array whose dimension is more than 2, 2 or more can be called as multidimensional array. Uh, uh, listen here, that is here it is a, it is row 0 and this is row 1, this is row 2. So, a two dimensional array is in essence a list of one dimensional array. This is a one dimensional array, this is another one dimensional array. And again, this is another one dimensional array. So, in a sense, a two dimensional array can be called as a list of one dimensional array. So, in the memory address calculation of two, uh, I mean, a two dimensional array, we have to consider a row major ordering and column major ordering. Only when we know that whether the elements are stored in either row major order or column major order, we will be able to find the address location of a particular element in the array. So, we have to know what is row major ordering and column major ordering. So, let us proceed. Row major ordering. Row major order is a way to represent the element of a multidimensional array in the sequential memory. That is, we have seen there are a particular number of rows and particular number of columns in a two-dimensional array. So, what we are doing in row major ordering is, we are storing each element row by row, each element row by row. Here, consider this two-dimensional array. How many rows are here? 1, 2, 3. There are 3 rows are here. 
So, how can we represent these elements in memory? Suppose this is the memory location. These are the various memory location. We, we know that all the elements in the array are stored in contiguous memory locations. So, all these elements will be stored in continuous locations only. And how are they ordered? In row major order, all the elements in the first row are stored initially, then all the elements in the second row are then stored and finally, all the elements in the last row are stored. This is the row major ordering. And if that is row major ordering, what could be column major ordering? All the elements in a two dimensional array are stored column wise, column by column. See, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1. What does it mean? Ele uh, element with subscript 1, 1 means it belongs to first row, first column, second row, first column, third row, first column, first row, second column, like that. So, from here to from here, uh, from here till here, these elements belong to first column and from here till here, all the second indices are 2. That means all the elements belong to the second column. Then from here till here, all the elements belong to third column like that. So, this is how we represent elements in the column major order in memory. These are, suppose this is a memory location. The first element will be stored here and like that it goes on. In short, we can say this is row major ordering and this is column major ordering. Row major order, each elements we are storing row by row in memory continuously. In column major order, all the all the elements in one column, then the next column, then the other, we will proceed in that fashion. Then, when the elements are stored in a row major order, when the elements are stored in a row major order, how can we find out the address location of a particular element? Let us look an example first. Suppose we have to find the address location of A33. We have to find the address location of A33. And we are given that these elements are stored row, uh, in a row major order fashion. That means what? All the elements in the first row are stored continuously, then the next row and then finally this row comes. So, initially we have to find how many rows are present before the current row. We are now dealing with this row, right? Because the element belongs to this row. So, how many elements are there or how many rows are present before the current row? How can you find out that? This is the index of the row. This is the index of the row number. And if you subtract the current index of row, uh, no, if you subtract the lower bound of the row index, from the current index of the row number, you will get the number of rows. That is, if you do 3 minus 1, this is the lower bound of the row and this is the upper bound of the row. This is the lower bound of the column number and this is the upper bound of the column number. That is, there are 4 columns from 1 to 4 and there are 3 rows from 1 to 3. So, how, how can you find out how many rows are bef present before the current row? That is, 3 minus the lower bound of the row. There are 2 rows are present in the uh, present and you have to calculate how many, how much memory that is uh, been taken by the, by all those elements. How can you find out that? Then you have to find out the size of a particular row. row. What is size of a row? Mm -hmm. Size of a row will be equal to the number of columns present in it. So, that you can find out by Suppose this is LB1, UB1, this is LB2, UB2, UB2 and you have to find out the size of a row. Size of a row is nothing but the number of columns in it that is UB2 minus LB2. Here taking this example 4 minus 1 that is 4 minus 1. Uh, 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 size of a row is UB, UB2 minus LB2 plus 1, that is 4 minus 1, that is 3 plus 1. It will give you the size of a row. So, you, you now you got there are 
two columns present, two columns present. Each of the column sizes, I mean, uh, two rows are present, and each of the row size is four. So, total eight. And you have to multiply this with the size of each element. Suppose it is eight, one byte, then it is eight. So these many elements are taking eight bytes of memory. And now you are here. And now you have to calculate how many elements are present before the desired, uh, uh, I mean desired element. How, uh, how can you find out that? You have to find how many columns are present before the current element. How can you find out that? That is 3 minus 1. What is this 1? This is the lower bound of the column. Now we can apply this in and, and then uh, that is 3 minus 1 which will give you 2. That is 2 elements are present each of size 1. Then it will give you 2. Then you can add this 2 with the 8. That will give you the total amount of uh, total how much memory space is consumed by this many elements. That is 2 plus 8. That is 10. And this 10 you can add with the memory address uh, of the first element. That is base address of the first element. Base address of the array. Then you will get the address location of this, th this particular element. See, this is the raw major representation. We have to find the address of an element which is located at mth row and nth column. So, we have to find total number of rows present before the mth row into size of a row. Then plus that should be added with total number of elements present before the nth element in the mth row into size of a element. Then total number of rows present before the mth row. How can you find out that? We have already seen that m minus lb1. What, what is that m? m was the uh, the row index. We, we have to find the address of a m uh, m n. We have to find the address of a m n. So, what is this m? m is the index, row index. It should be my uh, and LB1 is what? It is the lower index of the row. Suppose this is the two dimensional array. LB1 is the lower bound of the row. UB1 is the upper bound of the row. And LB2 is the lower bound of the column. And UB2 is the upper bound of the column. So M minus LB1 will give you the total number of rows present before the mth row. And size of a row, how can you get that? Then uh, which will be equal to total number of elements present in the row into size of an element. That is UB2 minus LB2 plus 1. We have already seen that UB2 minus LB2 plus 1, which will give you the number of columns present in a single row. That is nothing but the length or the size of a row. Total number of elements present before the nth element in the mth row. mth element, nth element in the mth row. That will be equal to Suppose if this, this is a column n minus lb2, n minus lb2. So combining all this, we will get this formula. Now consider an example. Given an array, array of 1, 10 and 1, 15. What is this 1, 10 and 1, 15? This is lb1, lower bound of the row. This is UB1, upper bound of the row. This is LB2, lower bound of column. And this is UB2, upper bound of column. With base value 100 and the size of each element is 1 byte in memory. Find the address of R86. That is, we have to find the address of the element which is located at 8th row and 6th column. With the help of a row major ordering. The elements are following a row major order fashion. So, Applying the formula, address of A, I, J will be equal to B. That is nothing but base address. That is what, what is that? It is the address location, memory address location of the first element in the array. 
W that is size of each element in the array into I minus LB1. LB1 is what? That is the lower bound of rho into UB2 minus LB2 plus 1 plus J minus LB2. We can substitute all the values. What is I and J? This is I, this is J. Index of rho J is the index of column. As I have said, this is the lower bound of the row, this is the upper bound of the row, this is the lower bound of column, this is the upper bound of the column. And applying all these values in this equation, we will get the address of Aij. Hope it is clear. Similar to the row major order, we have row major, uh, column major representation also. See here, suppose we have to find the address of this element. So, all the elements in this column are initially stored here in the memory. Suppose this is the memory. One, two, three elements are there. One, two, three. Three elements are there. All these three elements are stored initially in the memory. Then, Actually, we have to find the address location of this element. After storing all these three elements, we have to store all the elements which is, which is contained in the next column. That is 1, 2, 3. First column, second column. And then we have to reach the column where our particular element belongs. And see how many elements are placed before that particular element. That is only one element. How can you find out that? That is the number of rows present before the current row. How, this is the current row value 1 minus 0. That is only one element is present before the current element. So, length of a dimension as I have already said. It is upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. Uh, address of AMN. We have to find the address location of the element AMN. Then total number of columns present before the nth column. Actually we are storing in, it in the column major order. So all the elements in the first column are stored. Then second column are stored and the third column are stored. So if the element is present here. Number of columns present before the current column. Total number of columns present before the nth column into size of a column. How can you get the size of a column? That is nothing but the length of dimension. The size of a column will be equal to the number of rows. And that will be equal to what was the dimension? Upper bound and lower bound of row. That is LB1 and UB1. LB1 is the lower bound of row. UB1 is the upper bound of row. So, UB1 minus LB1 plus 1 will give you the size of a column. That is the number of rows present in a particular column. So, that is the size of column. Then, total number of elements present before the nth element in the nth column. Suppose we have to find the address location of this AMN. We have to find how many elements are present before this mth element in this column, in this column. How can we find out that n minus LB2? LB2 is nothing but the lower bound of the column. Sorry, m minus LB1. So, m is the row number of the current element and LB1 is the lower bound of the row. So, total number of elements, uh, total number of columns present before the nth column will be n minus LB2. And size of a column will be UB1 minus LB1 plus 1. That is size of a column. Size, that is the number of rows present in that particular column into size of an element. Then total number of elements present before the mth element in the nth column will be equal to M minus LB1. And applying these values in this equation, we will get this equation. Then coming to example. Given an array are 1 to 10. That is, this is the lower bound of row 
and this is the upper bound of row and this is the lower bound of column and this is the upper bound of column with a base value of 100 that is it is in the address location 100 that is the first element in this two dimensional array is going to be stored and the size of each element is one byte in memory and find the address of array 86 that is the element which is present at the eighth row sixth column if it follows a column major order fashion so address of aij is equal to b plus that is base address plus w that is size of each element j minus lb2 into ub1 minus lb1 plus 1 what is this this is size of a column size of a column then this is number of columns number of columns present before the current element into size of that particular column plus number of elements present before that particular element in that particular column that it will be equal to i minus lb1 and applying what is i and j i is this and j is this i is this j is this this is lb1 ub1 this is lb2 ub2 applying all these values in the equation we will get this answer and now we are we, where we can have the memory address calculation of an element in an n dimensional array right now we have seen how to calculate the element in one dimensional array and two dimensional array in the two dimensional array we have two cases when the elements were stored in a row major order and when the elements were stored in column major order now here also in the n-dimensional array also we have those two orders like uh, namely row major and column major order. The row major formula, the row major formula is this n-dimensional array with dimension i1, i2 up to in will be equal to base address of the array plus w, w is nothing but the size of an element in the array within bracket e1 s2 plus e2 s3 plus e3 etc etc up to en minus 1 sn plus en what is e1 e1 is the effective address if what is what do you mean by effective address that is ii minus ti that is suppose the 1 2 3 and the array index starts from 1, uh, array index starts from 1 to 10 and 2 to 20. This is a two dimensional array and this is the dimension, uh, lower, lower and upper bound of the first dimension and this is the lower and upper bound of the second dimension. What is EI? EI means effective address, effective address of this element, effective address of this element will be 2 minus 1 that is the present, uh, present row value minus the lower bound of the corresponding uh, dimension that is E1, E1 will be 2 minus 1, what will be E2 that is effective address of this second dimension, what will be that? 3 minus lower bound of the corresponding dimension that is 3 minus 2 that will be E1 and E2. So, EI is given by that is effective address is given by II minus TI where II is the index of the array element which needs to be determined and what is TI? TI is the lower bound of that corresponding dimension and this is the column major formula. Base address W, EI are all same here also then the formula is base address plus size of an element into en sn minus 1 plus en minus 1 sn minus 2 plus etc up to um, e2 s1 plus e1 now let's have a example given an array a 1 to 9 minus 4 to 1 
5 to 10 with a base value of 400 and the size of each element is 2 bytes in the memory. Find the address of the element at location 5, minus 1 and 8 with the help of row major order. So, we can apply this equation. This is the equation for the row major order. And here we have to find what is E1, what E2, E3, then S1, S2, S3. Why? Because it is a three dimensional array. So, we have three dimension. So, we have to find out E1, E2, E3 as well as S1, S2 and S3. And we know W. W is 2 byte and we have uh, B base address also that is 400. How can you calculate E1? E1 is 5 minus lower bound of that corresponding dimension that is 5 minus 1. What is E2? Minus 1 minus lower bound of that corresponding dimension minus 4. That is then E3. E3 is 8 minus lower bound that is 5. We got up to this. Then S1, S2, S3. Those are the size or length of that particular dimension. S1, then what is the size of S1? That is the size of first dimension. We have already seen how can you, how can we find out the size of a particular dimension that is upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. So, the, what will be S1? S1 will be, this is the upper bound of the, this 9 is the upper bound of the first dimension. 1 is the lower bound of the first dimension. So, S1 will be, that is size of the first dimension will be 9 minus 1. 9 minus 1 plus 1. Lower, upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. That is this. Then S2, S2 will be upper bound of the second dimension minus lower bound of the second dimension plus 1. That is 1 minus minus 4 plus 1. S3 will be 10 minus 5 plus 1. So, we got E1, E2, E3 as well as S1, S2, S3. So, substituting these values in this equation, we will get the answer as 730. So, that's it. Hope you understand the concept behind memory address calculation and all. Thank you.